Hi guys, thanks for tuning in and today we're going to take a look at how we can create this very awesome React notification component that you can see up here in the top right corner. So stay tuned! Starting off, we need the components folder for this component. So we're going to create it and we're going to call it notifications. We want an index.js file here. And we want to import React as usual. And also style components. Like that, perfect. Now we want a class. So export default class notifications. Extends React.component. Great. We also need the render method. Render, if I can type correctly. No, I couldn't. Uh, but anyways... Perfect. Now we need a container for the notifications. So const container is equal to style.div. Perfect. And now we want a background color for this. And I like a dark gray, so I'm going to go with that. But you can, of course, choose whatever you want. I want the text color to be white. I want some padding. And then we need to put the position and set that to absolute. Because we want this in the top left, uh, the top right corner now. Uh, and doing that, we also need to set the top to, let's say, 16 pixels initially. And then the right to 16 pixels as well. And the last thing we need for the positioning is the Z index. I'm going to put that up really high so it floats above all the other components. We also want a transition because we want to animate this top property here. Uh, but you can animate whatever property you want. If you want to animate opacity, you can do that. And I'm going to type in top 0 0.5 seconds and we're going to ease it. Great. So that is our initial style component. And now we can just throw in the container here and add some example text. Like that. And now we can go ahead and use this in our root component. So I'm just going to use it right here. Like that. And hopefully now, if everything has worked out, we can see the notification. And indeed we can, up here in the top right corner. Now, we want a way to animate this. Uh, so, we're going to create a constructor. And just do the basic things here, super props. And then add the state. And the state will contain one property, and that is top. And that is going to be set to minus 100 initially. And this is a property we want to use inside this style component here. And we can do that by going to the top property here. And getting the top property of this tag here. Uh, so now we can use this. Type top is equal to this.state.top. So hopefully now uh, everything is now invisible, and indeed it is, which is really good. So now the next step is to create two methods. One will be called onShow. We're going to use that a bit later. And then we want another one called show notification. And this will basically set the top property to 16 again that will animate the top position. So this.set state and we want to set the top property to 60. If we now were to call this method uh, we can see the uh, animation happening and we're going to do that and test that out by first creating a react.fragment component because we need to wrap this if we want multiple children like that and then we need a closing bracket and then let's just create a button here to trigger this event. So button, click me, and then we'll add the onClick method here. 
and this will actually we can just throw this in straight away here so show notification so now if we were to test this out press this button here we can see that the animation is indeed working as it should now we want a way to make it disappear uh, and we can do that and in react there is a possibility to add a callback function to this set state here since set state is a an asynchronous function uh, we need to have a callback for this so we're going to create a timeout so we're going to set the timeout give this a function which will execute after let's say 3000 milliseconds and now we can set the state again and I'm going to set the top property back to minus 100 so hopefully now if we test this out if we press this button here it pops down and should pop up again and indeed it does so that is really good now we need to handle the way or the possibility that a user could click this multiple times and the way we can do this is by clearing the previous timeout so in the constructor we're going to bind a variable and this is going to be called timeout and it's going to be null initially and then we want to take this timeout here and set that equal to that variable and now we're going to add some functionality in this onShow method here instead so first we need a check to check if there is an existing timeout if it is we want to clear it so clear timeout like that now when we're clicking it again uh, I'm thinking that if the notification is here we want it to pop up again and then pop down again with a new message so we can set the state here and we can set the top to minus 100 again and then we can give this another callback and this dot timeout will be equal to a new timeout and we will pass in a function and we want this to execute after 500 milliseconds the same time as this transition takes and when this is done when it has animated um, back top and then we will want to animate the new one we can call show notification again so this dot show notification and of course if there isn't any timeouts we just want to show the notification as usual so if we take this and throw that in to the bottom instead and try this out if I click and I click again it pops back just the way we wanted it to cool now of course uh, it's just stupid having a button in here so we're going to remove this for now and now we need a way to trigger the notifications and I've found a very good node package that we can use for this and this is called the event emitter so you can I'll put this in the link in the description for you so we want to install that now so yarn add event emitter emitter and just go and I'll come back with you when this is done so everything is done now and now we can use this emitter and the way we're going to use it is that we need to import it into this class here into this file sorry so import ee from event emitter like that and now we're going to create a new instance of this event emitter so const em emitter is equal to a new ee and when this is done we want to create a function which we're going to export uh, and we're just going to do this and an equal sign there export const and we need to name it of course so let's call this function uh, notify and this will take in a message and basically you can transfer events with this emitter here uh, so we're going to make this the base 
trigger system of the notifications here. Uh, so we can actually call emitter dot dot emit, and this will take in uh, first of all a key. So we're just gonna type notification, and then every other argument here will be called in a callback function, and we can take the message which is coming from here and throw that in. And the way to use this is that in the constructor we can call emitter dot on and then use the same key here and then you will have a callback method like that and this will take in the message and if I were to add another parameter here true for instance you would get another argument in the function so it's really useful so what we want to do now is to pass in the message here and we also need to pass it into this show notification method like that and then we can just add this to the state here so message ECS that and then we need to define it here in the state of course so it's going to be initially an empty string and now we can just call this dot on show with the message coming in now to use this we can import the notify function inside of our root as well so notify and now we can have a button here instead so we could add the button here and on click just type a text in and now we're just going to call notify with some message so uh, this is a notification now we need to start up our application again and we can just refresh here and now we can see the button and if I press this you can see that the notification is shown so you can broadcast these events from wherever you want in the application which is really useful and to make this a bit prettier you can create a child selector up here because we're going to add an icon uh, and this will have a margin left of 8 pixels and then we can go back down here and we can just add an icon and I'm going to use font awesome so class name is equal to fa fa bell and if we try this out you can now see that we have a beautiful notification here. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you want more, subscribe and I'll see you the next time. Bye!